All right. The Assassin's Creed The Truth. David, the series I've done for a long time. I've done, a, I think, almost 30 episodes over the years analyzing ridiculous, crazy theories in Assassin's Creed lore and predicting the future of the games and sort of got over that. So I started doing real-life history videos. I did one on the real-life history of the Assassin Order, where they came from. Um, I did one on the Villa Auditore and, and Montregioni, the small towns. They're the only two I did, and I really enjoyed them. They're so much work, so much work. Um, and, you know, it, it's the reason the show exists is because I've sort of struggled and not enjoyed the process of making videos the way everyone else sort of does them and the way I thought I had to do them. That's why we're doing this. So I want to try to still bring this concept people love of history, and I love history, into this show So and talk to you about it. So um, do you remember the Borgia family? From Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood? It's been a while since I've played. Hang on. Um, I got my laptop yeah. on my on my uh, on my lap here. I want to show you a picture. Yeah. I want to show you a picture of them. Yeah, I remember. I remember the main. What's that? That the main guy. He's kind of fat. He's Rodrigo. Cool. But yeah, Rodri. Perfect. Rodrigo Borgia. Yeah, that's the guy. I remember. He's kind of pudgy. He's got some facial hair. He wears this little robe. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hang on. I'll pull you up a nice like image here. He's the main, one of the main villains, isn't he? Yeah, they're, they're the main villains of pretty much Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood. Um, oh, God. This is not a great image, but this is like... Remember them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, I remember, I remember that young son as well. Yeah, Cesare. Cesare. So, Cesare. so this is... I want to talk about, like, their... Dude, they're crazy. So they're real family. Real family, man. And And so everything that we see... All the family dynamics that we see in yeah. Assassin's Creed is based on yeah is documented fact. Well, okay, I, I don't. I would say documented, but I wouldn't say facts okay. here when it comes to the Borgia because the thing about history, especially, I feel like the Renaissance were an interesting time period, man, where you, it's you know in, after the Enlightenment, yeah. so the fucking printing press exists, people are reading books. People know shit, man. Fucking Da Vinci's there, the guy, you know, um, that invented homosexuality, as we as we talked about on mm -hmm. a stream the other day. That's true. <laughs> There's a reference to that, guys. It's a fucking joke. Relax. Um, but I feel like back then, man, like, everyone was just fucking everyone in the Renaissance. Everyone was just fucking everyone. And what I mm. mean by that is, like, it was really debaucherous time period. So... When people, when you read about someone being an asshole, they probably lost whatever war was going on, whatever debate happened, and they got murdered. And their fucking hated gossip bitch enemies wrote about them and said they fucking used to do this. They fucking, fucking did witchcraft. They poisoned people. They fucked their sister. History like, is written by the victor. History is written by General the victor. And yeah, a hundred percent. Now here's the thing: Borgia probably did all these things, but so did every cunt that lived around him that won. But they didn't write them about themselves, did they? You know what I mean? They're not talking about how they fucking got sodomized by, like, the fucking, you know, pastor. You know, mm -hmm. the Catholic Church around a lot. You know, they didn't talk about how they would, like, fucking the blacksmith down the road. You yeah. know? Hectic, hey. You know? They weren't talking about... They, the mistresses, you know, they're like, I didn't do that shit. But fucking the Borgias did. They fucked their sisters. You know? But the reason that's talking about... It may not even be true. There's such a bad reputation on the Borgias, man. Such a bad True. reputation. So I feel like if it's corroborated by more than, like, a, a few people... But like... here's the thing, it's not. Like, a lot of the facts are, like, written by various people that write about, like, their personalities, what they did. So there's things that, that are probably true. But then when it comes to, like, how evil they were... Because the Borgias are known as, like, quite an evil family. Can you, like... Yeah, Yeah. so... Let's, so let's, let's um, unpack that. I mean, let's... Um, so the Borgia... The first famous Borgia... There's two Borgia popes in history. Mm -hmm. Um, the first um, was uh, Alphonse de Borgia, 1378 to 1458 he lived, um, and he reign, reigned as Pope Calixtus III um, during that time. So the Borgia are a Spanish family, they're from Spain. So there's the first thing the Italians fucking hate about them. True. So the reason they're written shit about over the years. Spaniards. They're fucking Spaniards. And, and I mean, Rodriguez called the Spaniard in Assassin's Creed. The Italians didn't name. like the Spaniards? And they fucking didn't... Well, they didn't like the fucking Spanish people coming over, trying to get power, you know, in the Catholic Church. The papacy True, and shit. yeah. So, so you've got Alphonse Borgia, who becomes Pope, right? And he's the first big famous Borgia from, from Spain. Now, his nephew is Rodrigo. He makes Rodrigo a cardinal during the time of his papacy. 
And that's the thing a lot of popes did. Like, it wasn't actually about... Well, I, it isn't even now. But, you know, especially back then, it's sort of like... Someone become pope and they then, like, fucking plant their family or friends and shit as cardinals because they're the only people that could become popes next. So they fucking... It's like almost like some sort of... Nepotism, m- man. Nepotism. Dude, it's like a monarchy that's not a monarchy. You know what I mean? They mm. want their fucking son to be here and there and shit. So... Happens I'll, today, man. Politicians, man. Like, dude, it, and nothing's changed, man. Yeah. Nothing's changed. There's just a lot more fucking incest back then. If, today. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, well, actually, today is way more incest yeah. today. Yeah, Trump 100% fucks his son. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> 100%. I got some fucking questions, is what I'm saying about you the Trumps. The I'm <laughs> Stuck on his nipple or some shit. They probably do that shit, man. Who Dude, it's wild, man. Isn't it wild, these fucking rich people? Yeah, so Rodrigo became a cardinal. And he's been accused of buying the papacy. 1492, Rodrigo became Pope Alexander VI. Mm. And he was accused of buying the papacy. You know, promising... Certain cardinals, certain things. Certain people, certain things to vote him into the papacy. He becomes Pope, 1492. Uh, and he he elevated no fewer than 10 of his relatives to the College of Cardinals. Coincidence? You tell me. That's all I'm saying. Mm. So he also um, um, elevated his son. Arguably his eldest son, arguably not his eldest son. The details are a bit askew. His name's Cesare Borgia. Now he has, an, again, who's the eldest, Cesare or Juan, also known as Giovanni. Depends on what you read. I don't know why the fuck Giovanni's known as Juan in a lot of places. I don't know. But, but Giovanni was the eldest son. He became commander of the papal armies. Let's, let's just say he's the eldest son, for, for argument's sake. But there, there's some debate on whether he was born in 1476, 1474. Whereas Cesare is like, was he born in 76? Yeah, anyway. Juan's the commander of the papal armies. Cesare's a cardinal. Perfect place. You've got the leader of the armies that's going to fucking conquer shit. Is a Borgia. One of the cardinals, Cesare, Borgia. Future Pope, perhaps. What Rodrigo's doing is planting his family into power. Now, the interesting thing we need to understand about the Borgias, David, is how quickly they rose. So you've got Alphonse Borgia, who died in 1458. So, 1450s was Pope. And then by 1490s, his nephew's the Pope. That's a very short amount of time for a noble family to become as influential as they are, to have that sort of reign. Mm. So, in, insane, in fact. So to have a family rise that quickly, you've got to do some fucking backstabbing, man. you got to do some backstabbing. you got to do some weird shit. you got to buy your way in. That doesn't hold long-term success. So the reason I would argue the Borgias... From all my reading and, and, and understanding them, it's a, it's a family I've done a lot of research over the years and I'm very interested in, is because they pissed a lot of people off, man. They had a lot of enemies. They just had so many enemies. I mean, the Medici had a fuckload of enemies, but there's a lot of families that you don't know about and they're not quite as notorious, I would say, or as famous, because they don't give a fuck that 500 years later you're going to read about them in a history book. They just give a fuck that they've got money, wealth and power, their sons, grandsons, and so on and so on are going to have wealth and power. So they did it fucking slowly, man. The real slow game. So they just fucking played it quiet, didn't piss people off, slow game. But they're the noble families. So the reason the Borgias are uh, so hated is because they fucking piss a lot of people off. It's the first thing. So that's why you hear about these stories about Lucrezia Borgia did this. She slept with her father and brother. She's poisoned people. She's a witch and all this shit. Was it true? There's no real concrete evidence that any of those things happened, actually. A lot of it was written, actually, about her first husband that um, was annulled, that marriage was annulled. She was, Lucrezia was actually married three times. But we'll get into that. But the um, thing is, Rodrigo is quite known for his um, um, promiscuity. So he had a lot of children while he was pope. With a lot of different, with a lot of different women, and apparently, like they're like the fucking. What's what's a hot chick? What's like a like a like a known like she's like when you think of like the most beautiful woman in the world, like celebrity. Oh, like uh, Mila Kunis. R- Mila Kunis? She's what? hot, dude. What is this? Two thousand five? What do you mean? Two thousand five? Fifteen? What, Sixteen years ago? Mila Kunis? She's not that old? Mila Kunis? I mean, like, who's the most famous woman today? Like. I don't even know. I don't know. Who do you think's hot? 
I don't need... Uh, fucking... What? Ari- Ariana Grande? She's hot. I, I mean, I guess. She looks 12, but... I don't know, man. Well, like... I mean, even that's like Miranda Kerr, like 10 years ago, you'd say like Miranda Kerr. You know Miranda I mean? Kerr. Dude, she's smoke show. You know what I mean? Smoke show. Smoke show. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't... Meghan Markle, she's pretty hot. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Gorgeous. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I would, but she's like, I feel, oh God, people are going to say, I feel like she's a classy person. Yeah. I won't mean like, um, you know, in the six, who's... You don't have some, but that's the thing. Marilyn right? Monroe. You know what I mean? Back in the day. <laughs> okay, so I say Mila Kunis. No, no, I mean, like... I, what I'm saying is like, it's the... You Mar- know she's dead, right? Yeah. I, you love dead What shit. the fuck? No, to me. I mean, like, at the time, she's like, you know what you think of like a sort of notoriously famous, beautiful woman? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. like, in that time, oh, yeah. that's okay. who Rodrigo is fucking. You okay, know what I mean? So he's, he's like JFK. He's JFK. Rodrigo's JFK. JFK. Okay. Rodrigo's well, JFK. Was, think someone like, someone think clip like, that. Like, name a hot chick. Rodrigo okay. Borges JFK. Someone clip that. Holy fuck. Mm. It's all the rum I'm drinking. Um, so he had mistresses like that. He had mistresses like that. Juliana Farnese. She's a famous one. A famous, beautiful woman that he had, that he had multiple children with. And she was renowned as one of the most beautiful women of the day. The Monroe of her time, one might say, in Rome. Um, so that was the sort of behavior, man. But people always bring that up with Rodrigo. They're like, he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that. But fucking so did every other pope. But no one talks about it because, the, well, people do talk about it, but not as much, right? But like, it's like a big thing they're known for. Like these orgy parties that probably never happened. But they're all written about by these people that fucking hated them. Fucking hated them. That's the interesting thing I think I've learned most about the Borgia is that all these things that made them famous, all these things you read about, they're like, wow, they're such a notorious family. Wow, they're like crazy. They're the, of course, they're villains of Assassin's Creed. It's like, probably none of it happened. I'm sure they were fucking cunts. And I'm sure Rodrigo was, you know, having sex with all these women, having children, just being a terrible guy. But so were all the other popes. So all the other popes. The thing about Cesare, though, is there's a lot of stories that came out that he killed his older brother. And then, so he could not be cardinal anymore and then become the commander of the papal armies, which he did become. But again, it makes no sense. There's more evidence that his younger brother did it because Juan was having an affair with um, his, his younger brother's wife. Whereas Cesare is like, Cesare being cardinal was important to that family, for the future of that family. It made no sense for Cesare to not want to be pope later in life. Like, it actually made no sense for the family. And there's no real evidence, but people accuse Cesare of doing it. There's a lot of stories written about it. Cesare was known as quite a handsome quite a famous man and quite a well-to-do guy. Not like a good guy, but like confident. Get Got shit done, man. Got shit done. And he, but like his father, was very ambitious. Not necessarily to come Pope, but once he was commander of the papal armies, man, he was like, I'm going to carve out a fucking empire here. His, you know, wars against the Sforza in Romagna, like those central northern Italian regions like in Milan, like he was fucking him up. He had a lot of control over the years of the papal armies between, you know, the late 1400s, 1497, I believe was when Juan died to um, 1503 when Rodrigo died. You know, Cesare was, he was getting shit done, man, but he made a lot of enemies. He made a lot of enemies. Um, And and the problem was when Rodrigo did die, um, you know, he he was pretty much forced to abandon the dream. He, uh, he, he wanted to, he, he managed to influence who the next Pope was, um, that would keep all his titles and everything. But that guy died like a month later and then he fucking had barely any allies. And in the end, um, Pope Julius II, who was the next Pope in after that, um, apparently made promises to Cesare. And then once he was in Pope, just fucking hated the guy and, you know, wanted him arrested. Cesare ended up having to like leave Italy and go back to Spain and run away. And he made some allies there, but... Um, in the end, uh, he died in Vienna in a castle uh, in Spain uh, in 1507 because uh, King John gave him an army of 10,000 to command to take a castle. And I think he prom- made some promises. If you do this, then I'll give you, you know, I'll help you take, take back control in Rome. Uh, and in the end, Cesare died. And with that, the, the Borgia family pretty much dissipated, man. Like they went from the most powerful family in the world for like a decade to nothing, like almost non-existent on the map, man. That doesn't happen unless you're fucking hated. Like, people wanted to erase them. People didn't like the Borgias, man. Mm. So was it true that Cesare was fucking Lucrezia's sister? And so was Rodrigo? I don't know. 
There's not apparently not a lot of evidence for it. But what you can take away is Cesare was a really ambitious guy. Rodrigo, really ambitious guy. And they, but they were probably also selfish because you've got all these other nobles that are like, I don't mind, I don't need to be pope, I just want to be rich, I want my children to be rich, I want their children to be rich, and so on and so on. Whereas Rodrigo's like, I don't care if my children are rich or their children are rich, I only give a fuck if I'm the pope and I'm in power. Like, they wanted the ones to have done everything, and because they rose to power so quickly, because they were just such in a rush to grab it, they lost it all. And when they lost it all, they lost it hard. Swift rise, and in some ways an even swifter fall, in a lot of cases. In a lot of cases. Um, and then it comes to Lucrezia Borgia. She married three times, all for political reasons, of course. Um, uh, first marriage was annulled. Um, apparently they didn't consummate the marriage. Fucking <laughs> doubt it. Bullshit. Um, second husband was murdered by Cesare's servants, so that was great. There's definitely, you know, I mean, the family was close. Let's just say that, David. Let's just say the family's fucking close. The family's fucking close. Um, but apparently... You know, after, you know, her father and her brother died, Lucrezia was her third marriage. She was quite, I mean, it managed to last pretty much until her death. She was a, a duchess and had a pretty comfortable life at court. She found the one, man. Dude, she, she found, found the one, one man. When she's you know, like, when you know, you know. She's not getting fucked by her brother and dad anymore. She got away from that <laughs> shit. She found the one and, well, I mean, probably the best thing that ever happened to her is they died, to be fair. Yeah. To be fair. But she was accused of incest, had a reputation of being a whore, a poisoner, a witch. Um, but again, I think a lot of it came from her first husband. I mean, what woman didn't back then, man? Every woman was a fucking adulterous witch, you know, back in the day. Fucking now, man. Because Look all you have, to, all you, I mean, now you need to have at least some evidence. You know, back yeah. then, back you? then you didn't even, you didn't even evidence, bro. Yeah, bro, I don't know, man. I don't, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, of accusing a woman of something. I mean, it's, not, it's the other way around now, bro. No yeah, one's, man. no one's accusing women of shit now. The old no one's witch, going. Man. She's a witch. Imagine, imagine yeah. that happening. The pendulum, imagine the pendulum is swung full circle. Oh, dude, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. But man, the Borgia, like, there's still known relatives of the Borgias, of like Cesare and Lucrezia and stuff. Like in the world, like, I think one was like the, the a president of some small European nation in like the like a hundred years ago. Not even mm. like 70, 80 years ago. Wild man, wild. But, you know, like, part of the reason for their reputation is, like, they were definitely... These guys were ruthless, ambitious guys, man. And they, like, they murdered a lot of people. They backstabbed. They bought their way to the top. No doubt about it. These guys were fucking treacherous assholes. But so was everyone else. So was everyone else. And because they made so many enemies, because they rose so quickly, their reputation was tarnished. And when they, when they fell, they fell hard. And everyone wanted to get rid of them. They had a lot of enemies. So once they didn't have that power anymore... Cesare was done. Cesare was done. Yeah. So it's, it's, they're an interesting family, man. It's, it, I'm almost disappointed when I did a lot of my reading and research for this. I was like, I was hoping it, that everything would be true. You know, I was like, oh yeah, they, all this crazy shit happened. They were just this insanely like debaucherous family and everyone else was really normal and everyone hated them because they were debaucherous. It was like, no, everyone just hated them because they had the power and they didn't, you know, and how they got it, how quickly they got it. Jealousy, man. It's just it's just jealousy. But the Borgia, man, interesting family. Interesting family. Uh, and, and they just... Interesting because they just came and went. They really just came and went. And important... The most important role in that time period, the um, in the Renaissance, being the Pope. It's like king of the world at that time. The Catholic Church ran fucking everything in that time. So, yeah. Wild. Wild. But that's, um, that's a real-life history of the Borgias, David. There you go, man. Yeah, dude. Hectic. There's just no evidence. There's just no hard evidence for anything except Every, for but, accounts. But that's the thing about the Renaissance, man. Like, it feels like everything you read in evidence is gossip. It's yeah. all like, fuck, because everyone knew each other. All the, like, philosophers, like Machiavelli, they all fucking knew them. Yeah. Like, Machiavelli met Cesare. Like, when he's writing about Cesare, like, he met the guy. It's not like these scholars, like, or ju- like a journalist, like, witnessing an event and then writing about it. It's like, they actually, like, knew them personally and, like, had bias to that person yeah and probably whatever was written about them was you know heavily influenced by yeah yeah yeah, yeah, exactly you know women and things like that exactly so there's like because there's like that personal element to it yeah they're writing from a personal perspective they're not writing from an eyewitness or like a observer or fly on the wall they're writing from that dude fucked me over fuck that guy he fucking poison bitches he fucking slept around he fucking cast spells and shit you know what i mean crazy hey crazy man crazy
crazy fucking history, man. History. You know? Um, interesting way of doing it. I've never... Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing real life history this way. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this sort of format. Really ca- Very ca- The most casual, some would say, um, way to do this. But, um, you know, let me know what you think down in, down in the comments. Is this... Did you like this? Should I just give up on the real life history stuff? But I feel like... I feel like that was fun. Did you learn something new today, David? I did. Yeah, I did for sure. That's good. That's all that matters. I'm here to teach David because he's an idiot. So... Honestly, I love learning, I think, because I learn every day because I don't know anything. So, <laughs> Just I, like a big baby. I'm just a big sponge, man. A big old dry sponge. Big of dry brain. sponge. I'm trying to just fucking wet you up, man. Just Thank trying you. to moisten you. Moisten Are you wet? Would you say you're sponge. wet right now? I'd say my mind is moist. <laughs> Your mind's <laughs> moist. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm.